And welcome back. Today we are going to be flying out, well, a plethora of planes because I mostly want to talk about the new additions of the new trailer. If you haven't seen the trailer yet, I highly advise you to check it out, especially the reveal around the middle is pretty damn sick. And we are going to be taking a look at it in a second here. I don't want to go too in-depth into it, I don't want to make it a reaction video, but I do want to tell you my thoughts on this because I know that a lot of you guys are going to be asking me this. And if I have to be honest, I really just can't be bothered to constantly reply to all these messages. So instead, I'll just make a video this time to kind of give you a reaction on what's there to come. If you haven't watched the thing yet and you don't want to be spoiled, check it out first. But I do want to talk about a few things here. And you might think, well, the Mirage 2000 has some pretty damn good missiles. And you would be right. But, uh, well, let's take a look at the things that are about to get added to this game. And here we have it. The new trailer. And I'm going to be skipping the story a little bit. Because I really I just don't care. Let's look at the first vehicle that they actually show off. And it's got to be the Tornado. And the Tornado here was one of those planes. When I was younger. When I was a child. I really like this thing. The issue is in War Thunder. While well, it might be a better airframe than something like the FGR. Because it has similar acceleration to the F-14. When it's clean. It has dummy fast top speed. And it has about the same maneuverability as something like an f Maybe a little bit better with the wings all the way out. But in essence you are going to be a poorly turning F-14. And the real issue is here that you don't carry any radar missiles. At least not from, from what I have seen. And it, I only see it carry two AIM-9Ls throughout this entire video. And uh, no radar missiles. Looking kind of rough. British really don't really get good stuff very often. They finally add the tornado and they do it together with this absolute menace and this absolute menace. So, you know, a little bit too late. And considering it only gets two of those missiles, I mean, they're pretty good missiles. Probably some of the best IR ones, but it's just not it. Considering this thing is strapping, or I should say packing, because this is an absolute dildo machine. R27s, and this is the R2017, you can see by the secret hat. And they're just improved R24s, they're pretty damn nasty. And no... That's not the only thing it gets. It does not get R60Ms. Well, maybe it does, but if you're not too familiar with these, these are R73s. There is a possibility that you might be able to carry seven of these or six of these. Uh, I do advise you to run two of the R27s, depending on how they are going to be implemented. But this missile loadout is going to be pretty damn cracked. And it's going to be pretty damn scary. It's a little bit like when the MiG-23 MLD got added. And the R24 was like the, the missile that you wanted to go to. If you wanted to fuck someone over across the map. Pretty damn maneuverable. These things supposedly also have IRCCM. Which means that it's going to not ignore flares. But it's going to be more resistant. And if you have seen clips. Real life clips. Maybe DCS clips. Of R73s. You should know that they're pretty damn scary. And if I don't forget. I'll put a clip in here in the background. And you can see these things do full on. 360 degree turns. The MiG-29 is also one of those vehicles that I'm really stoked to see. I do have to say that the model looks quite a bit worse compared to like the F-16. The F-16 I think looks a lot better in terms of like the quality of the model. But that might also be the trailer, might also be YouTube, might also be the camo. So I can't really... Or maybe it's not even finished yet. They both look great. I'm looking forward to the MiG-29 the most here. Pretty damn maneuverable. It's probably going to be like the ME-163. Probably not going to be very fun to face however. Because of that mechanic, it's basically going to be one of those vehicles that, as long as it has fuel, it's going to be really fucking annoying. But of course, you can still counter it with missiles somewhat. Whereas an ME-163 is just... You just wait. You just have to wait until it runs out of fuel, really. This thing might be a little bit more competitive. I'm really... Uh, looking forward is a big word. The thing is, with what on the top tier, to me... It's mostly already dead. It's really like it's already progressed into that stage where top tier, the, it's not really going to get better. So at this point, I'd rather just fly, fly something that I actually really like. And this is one of those vehicles, the MiG-29. And of course, the MiG-29 has the ability to simply look at people and lock them up with the helmet mount. But we have to see if they actually do end up adding it. If it gets that together with the R-73s and the R-27s, we're going to have a pretty nasty combination on our hands. That's going to be the MiG-29. Absolutely bonkers performance. We're not sure how it's going to fare exactly. But that missile set alone is already going to be pretty damn deadly. Second, we have then the Tornado. I mean, the Tornado doesn't really make that many appearances. And you don't really see it carry any missiles to begin with. So it's kind of like, what is it carrying? Over here, it has a massive chunk of a missile on the bottom. I'm not too sure what that was. I Someone will have to 
Oh, that's a targeting port. I am blind as hell, but I don't really see it carrying any missiles. There's one other part where they show it, I think. But I wasn't exactly sure what it was. I'll try to get it on the screen here somewhere. I'm not sure where it is exactly. Here they are. I think they're AIM-9s of some sort. But I'm not, I'm not too familiar with these. I think... No, I'm not even going to say what I think they are. They might be Gs, but I'm not sure what it's going to be. I don't know what the loadout is going to be exactly either. And I don't know... Which exact model this is either. So on the Tornado right now. I can't really comment that much. I just have a feeling that it's not really going to be competing. With the likes of the MiG-29. As well as the F-16. One good thing about the MiG-29. That I forgot to add actually. It's going to get one of the better guns in the game. It's going to be the GSA-30-1. Which will have the same rounds. As the SU-25 and the MiG-27. And we all know. That if those rounds connect. Yeah you're, in, you're going to be in for a pretty bad time. But yeah, it's going to be pretty limited by fuel. But the same thing is going to go be true for the F-16. And really, if you haven't seen this with sound, and I know I've muted it, because otherwise I'm just instantly going to get smited off the platform. Absolute stellar job. I don't know if it's Pandromodo who actually got uh, hired. Well, he got hired, I know that. But I'm not sure if he actually was able to make this thing yet, or this trailer yet. But there is a thing here that I want to show you. And it's when it's carrying an absolute fat loadout. Keep in mind, of course, that the F-16 will be multi-role, whereas uh, the MiG-29 will mostly be air superiority, like an interceptor. So it won't have any ground, uh, out to ground ordnance. Whereas this thing, well, it's going to carry Mavericks, guided bombs. And over here, it's carrying AIM-9Ls together with the AIM-9Js, I think. But if the screenshots are true that we saw before this... Uh, then we can say that it might be able to carry six AIM-9Ls, which is pretty good. Of course, the trust the weight of this thing is going to be absolutely ridiculous. But it will depend a little bit on how they model the maneuverability of it. Because normally, War Tunnel takes a vehicle and it adds like a 1.5 multiplier to see, or to like increase the fidelity a little bit. Maximum stress. And to make it a little bit more of a game, because otherwise, if every plane pulls like 6 Gs max, well, it's going to be pretty... Every plane is going to fly like an F-104, basically. And I can understand why they don't want that. They wanted to make it more of a game. They want to make it more playful and not so much realism. The thing is, whether this thing is going to be limited by its fly-by-wire systems, where it's like a G-limiter, or if it's going to be balanced on the structural limits, it's going to make a little bit of a difference. But either way, at the very worst, it's going to be an absolute cracked-out-of-the-ass Harrier with six A9Ls. And this is going to be comparable to something like the J7E. And this thing will probably walk all over it. But it's going to be like a similar, similar playstyle. Where you don't really have any radar missiles. At least not this version I think. You do get a Vulcan. It's better at that. Better at acceleration. And this is going to be one of those vehicles. That you just want to dogfight everything in. But it's the same thing with the MiG-29. So I'm looking forward to this dynamic. Between this thing and the MiG-29. I'm not really looking forward to the dynamic between the MiG-29 and something like an F4EJ or an FGR or a Tornado. I'm not really looking forward to that matchup. And flying these things on patch day is probably going to be absolutely free. But man, uh, well they finally did it. Here it is. Higher tiers. So I showed you everything from the trailer. But there are a few things I kind of want to talk about. There is a possibility, of course, that we are going to get some new stuff for the MiG-23s, for example. Because the MiG-23 MLD could carry more missiles, could carry better missiles like the R-60Ms. And we're going to completely skip that and go straight to, well, MiG-29s. So I'm kind of hoping that something like the Kefir will get PL-8s. Or PL... No, not PL-8s. I hope they get, like, Python 3s. I hope that... Maybe they get an F-16 as well. Maybe Italy as well. They are adding a lot of new premiums as well to grind out all these vehicles. I still don't think that tier 7 premiums are a good thing. I still think they are a blatant cash grab. But at the same time, we might as well talk about them for a brief second here. The A6E is probably going to be a little bit of an SU-25 mobile. Where you just are an attacker with decent good missiles. It's going to completely depend on the BR. If you are going to be at a BR where everyone has flares, it's probably not going to be that amazing. But you know, it's going to be a decent grinder anyway. Then we have the Kefir Canard. And the Kefir Canard is going to be a worse C2. So look forward to that. It does get 9Gs. It probably only carries 2, however, looking from the screenshots and the trailers and stuff. So And the C7 or the C2 really isn't that great to begin with. So if they don't really add the F-16 or maybe the Kefir with better missiles... 
Mm, I, I don't think there is that much to get in the Israeli tech tree right now. But if they do actually go and give them the F-16, maybe go and give them uh, Python trees on the, on the Kefir, we might have something on our hands, something worth grinding. But keep in mind that the C2 is already not that great. And the C1 is going to be worse. So if it's going to be the same BR or maybe even one bracket lower is still too high. It's going to be not that fantastic to fly. But I'm not going to lie either. Because well there's really not that much to get in the Israeli tech tree anyway. Because the A4E is not that fantastic either. It's going to be a pretty painful grinder. And I mean what really, what else do you really have? And then we have the F-104S, the um, no countermeasures, AIM-9 P's it gets, which are basically AIM-9J's. And I mean, really, no countermeasures, and it's going to be like 10-7, I think, the, the one in the tech tree is right now. And you're not going to have a great time in it, let me tell you. But something like the Milan is fast, you can still try to run away from people, you can still try to bomb. But with something like the F-104, especially with the addition now of, say, the R-27s, and just all aspects in general that you can't really do much about in a vehicle like that. You're going to have a little bit of an issue. You're probably not going to have a great grinding experience. But we have to wait until it gets added. I'm kind of hoping that they add something for France that actually is flyable. Something like the F1 for example. It's not the best but hey, at least it's a consistent grinder with Magic 2s and stuff. They might not be the best IR missiles anymore after this patch. But at least you get something with good missiles and countermeasures. It's not going to win any awards in terms of performance. But at least it will be a consistent grinder. Whereas with the Milan, you're kind of forced to just go for bombing runs. Which not everyone exactly enjoys doing. And then lastly, we have the German MiG-21 BIS. Which is probably going to be the best premium they can really get. I mean, I don't like saying that because it's still rank 7. But hey, R60Ms, it actually does get them. It's a premium, not the best. It's also not the worst. It can hold its own somewhat. But it's of course going to depend on if any plane get different missiles, how bad the matchmaker is really going to be, and how focused the patch really is going to be on missiles. So we kind of have to wait. I will review all of the vehicles once they come out. I'll try to get a video done every day in the patch week, maybe two weeks. Depends on how many vehicles there are going to be added. But considering how many premiums are going to be added, I'm also expecting a lot of new top tier vehicles to be added. So it's going to depend. Maybe it's going to be even three weeks of constant uploads. Time will tell. But are you hyped? Do you rather not see this stuff being added? Let me know what you think down below. I'll try to cover as much of it as humanly possible once it comes out. But I still have to work. So I'm not sure how much of a guarantee that is going to be. Thank you all for watching anyway. And I'll see you all in the next one.